Hey friends, Deanna here with Homestead and Chill and welcome to our new berry patch. So today I wanna to show you a really simple, sturdy DIY berry trellis design that we're gonna to put together today for our raspberries, alala berries, and blackberries. So you can use it for any type of cane berry that you have. So in this video, I'll take you through all the supplies that you need, the step-by-step -step process to put together the trellises, as well as a couple variations that you can take that might fit better for your garden. Clearly we have kind of three mini trellis systems here since we have three different beds of berries, but you can also just create one long trellis for one main berry bed as well. I also put together a written blog article with photos and even more details. So if you wanna check that out, I will link that in the caption below along with link all of the supplies that we're gonna to use today. Otherwise, if you enjoy this video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to follow along for more. Otherwise, let's go get building some trellises. All right, we've got the tabby twins here helping out, at least for the moment, and just wanted to give you a quick peek and kind of mention something before we get started, just for a variation that you might want to take that's a little different from our design that you can keep in mind as we get started here looking at the supplies and everything. So as you can see, our berry beds are pretty close together, and so we wanted to create a trellis that was pretty streamlined and, you know, pretty compact and stuff here, and also minimize any digging that we needed to do right around the edge of the beds because we actually have hardware cloth buried all underneath the raised beds here to prevent gophers from digging up underneath them and we also have some burlap down here for weed suppression so rather than digging you know big posts down into the ground the only thing that's actually in the ground in our trellis is these fence t-posts these metal t-posts and then the two by four is attached to that and it is definitely super sturdy um but yeah just wanted to mention that because one of the variations that I've seen when folks create a similar berry tea trellis like this is to actually use four by fours down on the um, you know, vertical supports at the end here, and then actually put those down into the ground. So either digging the full post into the ground using concrete or cement, um, as you would set a fence post in the ground or using those concrete pier blocks um, that you can attach wood to down in the ground. So that's just one alternative thing that you can do, but if you do, you might wanna use a longer piece of board. So we only have a six foot board here on the end this bed is a foot tall, so that means that we're getting five feet of wood for support on top, where if you're gonna put yours down in the ground, you might want to use like an eight foot four by four to start. And now let's talk about supplies. So there's some really basic supplies that'll be necessary, you know, your supports and things. And then some of this is optional, so we'll just go through it and you can decide, you know, exactly how you want to design your trellis. But the most essential part is just having, you know, some kind of vertical support like we already talked about. So we're doing six foot two by fours for ourselves. You can use four by fours, something a little longer if you're going to put it down into the ground. If you are going to use T-posts like we are, which we have here, it is really helpful to have one of these fence pounders, um, but you can try to install them without that just by digging them in or something but we do have one to help install those and then your horizontal supports so these are the parts that are going to go across your trellis and it's best for the top one to be about a foot wider than your berry bed so our raised beds are two feet wide so we made this guy three feet wide and then the smaller piece that's going to be a couple feet down on your vertical support will be about six inches smaller than the top one so we have 36 inches and then this one is 30 inches here and we already pre-cut them but we're just using this rough cut two by two uh, redwood lumber we've used these to make trellises in in the past and it is pretty um, heavy duty sturdy stuff. From there you'll need some fasteners to connect the two bits of wood together so we just have some two and a half inch exterior screws that we're going to be using there as well as some wood glue that we're going to add into the um, junctions for a little extra support. And next we have these basic little screws with a hooky doodle on the end and that's going to be to connect where our wire will actually attach to each of these guys. And then that brings us to the wire. So there's a variety of things you can use for this. These are going to be, you know, to run down the length of the trellis that your berry vines are actually going to lean against and be supported by. You can use really basic, just, you know, garden wire. You could use twine even if you wanted to. We went with this uncoated wire rope or basically like a cable just so, because it's really durable and sturdy. It's not going to stretch out with time and we can actually make it adjustable or be able to tighten. Um, so that's what we're going with. If you do use something like this, there are a couple additional supplies that you will need so again you could always just use some basic wire and then just wrap it you know directly around these guys 
but to figure out how much wire or cable you will need, you're gonna wanna take the length of your berry bed or how far apart the two ends of your trellis are gonna be and multiply it by four. So our beds, um, we're gonna have our, our two ends about 10 feet apart. And because we're gonna have wires running, you know, two per side of the trellis, we need 40 feet. So we got this 50 foot roll um, per trellis that we're building. So if you do decide to use this type of wire, we're using a 1 16th, you will need, um, it's best to get these ferrules, which are, they have these little holes. I'll show you when we're actually putting it together, but the wire goes through here and then you crimp it down. We have this scrimping tool where we squeeze the, the ferrules around this cable and that's what um, enables you to like pinch it into a loop and make it stay put. Again, I'll demonstrate that, but you'll want the ferrules that coordinate the same, um, the same diameter as your wire so we're using the 1 16th and it is nice to also have the proper cutting tools for this because it makes a nice clean cut which enables this to go through those ferrules without the end fraying so those are really handy to have and then we're also using one of these little contraptions that's called a turnbuckle. And we're using one that has a solid eye on one end and then a hook on the other end. And as you can see, you know, this one is really spaced out and this one's really tight. This will actually enable us by turning this piece to tighten down this wire and take out any slack as needed that develops on our trellis so we can get things nice and tight. This is also though gonna allow us to actually undo and unhook and you'll see it in action when we actually put this all together but enable us to unhook the wire from our trellis rather than it being permanently installed with the ferros on one end so that we can take away the wire to access the bed to do any pruning or maintenance or fertilizing or things that we need to do where we don't want wires in our face basically um, and on that note you will need you know enough hooks for the ends of each of these um, but we're only using one of these turnbuckles um, per wire so rather than putting them on both ends just because it's not necessary to undo it from both ends and they're not the you know not the cheapest thing so just one per end is good now over to the last little bit of supplies that are optional and only apply if you're going to work with t-posts so these nifty little things again i will link all of what we're using here um, in the caption but these are like an adapter so that you can connect wood to a t-post so the t-post slips in here and then it sits like that and then you can screw your wood against this plate and so that's where we have some shorter screws here too um, that work for going through here into our two by four supports and then at the bottom um, again I'll show you over there but we got these five inch pipe clamps to put at the very base to hold our four by fours kind of flush against them at the bottom rather than using two of these guys up and down the whole length of the t-post we just have one of these on top that's connected to the wood and then this goes around the bottom of both and kind of tightens them together so that they stay together at the base Let's build the first end of the trellis. So we have our two by four laid out here and the two by twos on top. These are two feet apart. And then I made sure to measure to get them centered this way and that. And then all we're gonna do is come in and put a little bit of wood glue in this junction here. And then two screws by doing pilot holes first. After we screw in the top one and we come down and we're repeating the same process, I already put the glue in the bottom one, but before we screw it, we are just making sure that the distance between kind of the outside wings of each end are the same on both sides, just so that we know we have this guy set square across the middle of the two by four. So now that these are both attached and we're gonna go ahead and add our little screw eye hooks to the ends. We're not gonna put them on this side though. We're actually gonna flip this whole thing over and attach the hooks on the other side just with the idea of rather than putting additional pressure coming this way, you know, and having the weight of the trellis and the vines and the tension pulling, um, potentially making it more easy for these guys to wanna pop out this way, we're gonna have the wires run the opposite direction just to give it a little bit more stability.
first side of the trellis is all put together and ready. So we're just gonna repeat that same process to do side two, and then we'll go get them put up in the berry patch. It feels great to get that third and final berry trellis up and installed. So that's for our raspberries down there, which are a little slower growing and further behind than our alala berries and our blackberries down this way, which we probably will have to prune to help kind of manage their height on the top. But also in another way to help train them a little bit, I wanted to show you what we're doing. We're using some of these reusable um, soft garden wire ties that I just cut little pieces of to put around some of the canes to just kind of oh, it's po pokey um keep them upright a little bit more because they were wanting to sort of like slide all down to one end or flop onto each other so it just keeps it a little bit more tidy and especially for something like this where we have two different varieties in this blackberry bed kind of keeps them a little bit more segmented so we can know who's who when we're harvesting and it's as simple as that well, friends, thank you so much for tuning in today and following along. I hope that you found that to be useful and informative. And if you're interested in the raised beds that we have here, these are Birdie's Beds by Epic Gardening and code DeannaCat3 will save you 5% off and they are the best metal beds out there. We absolutely love them. Otherwise, be sure to check us out on homesteadandchill.com for even more gardening tips and information. And we'll see you next time.